friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears, pray unto very Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them, the good is often turned with their bones, so let it be with Caesar. Um, sometimes when I talk about hell, I feel a little bit like Mark Antony. <laughs> Maybe you will have understood when I have finished. Um, I would like to start with a few conceptual uh, clarifications. The way we think and talk about elf in the English classroom is strongly influenced by the way we think and talk about elf in the first place. If we conceptualize elf as a language, as some kind of variety of English, our pedagogical focus will naturally be on sounds and words and phrases and structures that should be or should not be taught. This is, I feel, what makes many uh, English teachers uh, associate elf and elf pedagogy with teaching incorrect English. If, on the other hand, we conceptualize elf with communication, the pedagogical objective will be understood as helping speakers and learners to develop and use their English for purposes of communicating under elf conditions. And this opens up a much more differentiated view on teaching towards elf competence. Before we proceed, we need to clarify our understanding of language learning. What does it mean to acquire a language? Well, from a social constructivist perspective, which I adopt, the best we can achieve when acquiring a language is to develop and create our own version of it in a complex, individual, and collaborative construction process that is influenced by a number of factors, including my native language, the target language I choose, or have been made to choose, the effort I invest, who I am, who I want to be. This raises, once again, the issue of standard English and its role in the elf-aware English classroom. Is a standard English orientation in conflict with successful elf communication? Well, quite obviously not. Otherwise, we would have serious problems here at this conference. Yet, much of the pedagogical discussion about elf keeps implicitly, sometimes explicitly, reinforcing a somewhat negative stance against standard English. I just want to say it loud and clearly. There is no intrinsic conflict between standard English and health. Over the past few years, this view has been gaining ground. Barbara Zeidenhofer, for instance, in her um, 2011 book publication, emphasizes that the choice of the target language is not health specific, actually, but rather depends on local educational decisions. This obviously includes standard English for most educational institutions about the world. More important than the choice of the target language, she argues, is what health speakers do with it, how they appropriate it, or as I would put it, how they create their own English. To uh, better understand teachers and speakers' obstinate standard English orientation. I feel it might help to introduce a distinction between 
uh, what I would call a strong version of one's standard English orientation and a weak version. According to the strong version, learners are required to strongly comply with the um, uh, standard English teaching norms. Deviations might be tolerated in particular communicative approaches, but the closer they get, the better. Such a view is very common in BOT circles, even among otherwise modern and more enlightened teachers. On closer inspection, however, it is quite clear that this strong version of one's standard English orientation is only compatible with a conceptualization of language learning along the lines of behavioristic um, copying and cloning processes. That is, with something we just don't believe in anymore. <coughs> the weak version, on the other hand, incorporates a social constructivist view according to which learners take some kind of standard English as a model that provides orientation but at the same time leaves room for the cognitive and emotional processes of creating their own brand of English. And interestingly enough, their own notion, learners' notion of standard English is already the result of their construction. And not to be confused with what linguists practice when they try to describe standard English and run into problems. Even with a standard English orientation, non-native speakers' creativity is thus an essential and non-detachable part of their foreign language learning. And it needs to be accepted as pedagogically positive and valuable. And because of this, it is essential that non-native speakers are given stronger agency with regard to assessing success. Speakers' own satisfaction, non-native speakers' own satisfaction with their communicative performance and with the communicative performance of their interlocutors needs to be acknowledged as and pedagogically implemented as a key criterion for success. Speaker satisfaction is the force that links learners' creativity, speakers' creativity, with their autonomy. And with this, I would like to move on to the dimensions of uh, uh, health competence. I will mainly uh, focus on awareness raising, comprehension, production, communication strategies, and non-native speaker creativity. The overall objective, of course, is to enable speakers and learners to develop and use their English to communicate successfully under lingua franca the conditions. Awareness raising. I won't make this very brief because it will come up later in connection with materials again. Of course, the objective is to make learners attentive to lingua franca manifestations of English, make them attentive to the conditions and requirements of successful communication. All this is essential for third space negotiation in a new cultural space. 
And interestingly enough, it helps foster um, learners' linguistic and cultural tolerance towards others, but also towards themselves, which is so very important. In terms of earth-aware tasks, uh, we have, of course, exploration of pedagogically relevant and actual manifestations of, of genuine English communication with focus on language, etc., but also with a focus on assessment regarding efficiency and satisfaction. Follow-up, reflective follow-up activities should be part of the pedagogical approach and the learning about. With regard to comprehension, the uh, objective is about helping speakers and learners develop health-aware comprehension skills for coping with unfamiliar pronunciation, unclear meanings, weak coherence. Again, essential for third space negotiation. Tasks, in particular, include comprehension practice with suitable authentic material, identification and analysis of comprehension problems, development of comprehension strategies, reflective follow-up, again, and a learning about. Production is to help speakers and learners develop health-aware production skills. In this connection, it is very important to help them and push them to reset their own requirements of performance. For instance, from focus on correctness to a stronger focus on fluency. It's also important to help them um, expand their linguistic repertoire, for instance, with regard to politeness, speech act functions, and these things which uh, come up under uh, pragmatic fluency, um, and also help them to have the means at their disposal that um, uh, prevent them from running into express ability problems. Again, relevant for uh, third space negotiation. Tasks, of course, include participation in authentic health interactions, which is extremely difficult to implement in our classrooms. How do I manage to do this? Participation uh, includes production practice with a focus on linguistic means that are appropriate and it also um, uh, requires opportunities for collaborative um, uh, language, reflective follow-up and learning about is necessary. Communication strategies to enable speakers and learners develop um, comprehension, production, interaction strategies. I single out the signaling and preventing misunderstandings it cuts across very essential, also in connection with uh, production development of course. Again, relevant for third space negotiation. And uh, uh, what I feel is very important from a pedagogical perspective is to understand that all these strategies are firmly rooted in um, our in ordinary communication and our ordinary community competence. However, there need to be um, adaptation processes. The tasks include, again, participation in the of health communication, identification and analysis uh, of problems and strategic solutions, reflective follow-up and uh, about. The trickiest part for me is non-native speaker creativity. Um, this is, in uh, my understanding, uh, helping learners speakers explore and trust their own non-native speaker creativity. For, for me, it has, um, I mean, over all these decades that I have been speaking and learning and developing my English, this came very, very late, well, thanks to health. But still, it's difficult how to implement this in the classroom. It is a necessary condition for developing 
non-native speakers feeling of agency and ownership, self-confidence and satisfaction. Creative appropriation is a natural and constitutive element of language learning. This is why we need to focus on creativity and give it a positive value. Tasks. First of all, I think we need to adopt a weak standard English orientation. We need a reset of requirements of performance. We need strategies for creative exploration and extension of one's own linguistic resources. We need critical sensitivity development through collaborative assessment. We need reflective follow-up in our teaching approaches and learning about. Now I would like to briefly touch on um, the outcomes from um, EU projects we have been involved in and are involved in uh, currently that uh, help um, in this connection, that might provide material or uh, approaches that help in connection with developing health uh, competence. Um, our Tübinger English as a Lingua Franca small corpus uh, project is about uh, the small uh, group uh, interactions uh, which are video recorded, transcribed, annotated and so forth and uh, they uh, can be used of course for elf comprehension uh, tasks. Combined with follow-up activities um, concerning summary accounts, discussions and maybe over to you now try to say again these kind of discussions. Identification of characteristics and assessment regarding effectiveness and so forth. This in particular uh, helps uh, foster awareness raising, comprehension, production, and I uh, use dotted lines here for communication skills because people are not actively involved themselves and native speaker creativity. In our backbone project, we um, uh, recorded um, a number of uh, kind of natural narrative interviews with speakers from different walks of life, including um, uh, English as a lingua franca interviews. We have some 50 interviews um, which are transcribed and annotated, and they can be used uh, for elf comprehension, with or without transcript support and these things, follow-up activities to uh, add writing tasks and discussion, interaction and these things. Focus is in particular on awareness raising, comprehension, and uh, um, uh, only in these follow up activities, uh, copying production, and these other things. HELIC is a, a project uh, that focuses on a practice enterprise uh, approach where uh, students play company. And while doing so in English, and while doing so, they go through all the moves um, using uh, their English. and. Uh, uh, this is, uh, we did it online, in online telecollaborative exchanges, and this is of course um, um, suitable, in this case it was mainly written communication, uh, suitable for practicing uh, business communication, identifying problems, one encounters, strategies that might be helpful, and uh, so forth. The uh, last uh, project uh, TILA, Telecollaboration for Intercultural Language Acquisition, uh, is a project we are currently involved in with uh, secondary school kids and we uh, want to help them to um, get in use telecollaboration to, to um, get in intercultural cultural exchanges with pupils from other uh, countries and to uh, communicate um, in uh, these blended learning environments. Focus is on, on spoken um, synchronous communication, that is the challenge. There is also written synchronous uh, communication and then the other activities but the focus is on synchronous communication. This is what I feel uh, provides an environment, a very interesting environment, for uh, enabling pupils to use their English or their German or their French, so this is across languages, 
to communicate with other pupils, talking about what they are interested in, and uh, so forth. Um, this is what I uh, would see now as particularly powerful in connection with uh, facilitating production and uh, the skills and, and uh, communicative strategy, the skills in this connection, um, and also de for developing a positive attitude concerning health. And we have noticed this already among our teachers who were first very skeptical uh, with regard to the elf constellation. Most of them wanted, first wanted to go for a tandem uh, constellation. And now they see how rich the interactions are and how um, uh, enthusiastic and motivated Cupids are, but that's um, the Lima Franca uh, uh, strand is 